I think it's cruel to say that all coin collectors are being prioritised for the vaccine because they're all over 90. It's absolutely not true. I'm not nearly there yet and I'm still enjoying coin collecting. And it's great when a set like this comes in. I haven't seen one of these before, but this is a special set that came out in 2005 um, to celebrate Battle of Trafalgar and Horatio Nelson. Um, I always have a soft spot for Nelson because my grandparents lived in uh, Southsea, Portsmouth and Southsea. And when I was a kid, I used to spend time at the naval dockyard in Portsmouth, taking a look at the ships and going over HMS Victory, Nelson's um, flagship at the Battle of Trafalgar. And it's always something that is you know, right there in my childhood memories. And so whenever I see anything relating to Trafalgar and... Uh, uh, and, and Nelson, I always kind of you know um, get a, get a bit more excited than some other subjects. But this is a two coin gold set, very special set. I mean, just look, um, they don't really produce these kind of sets anymore. Maybe because of the overall value being too high now that gold has gone up. Uh, but came with a lovely brochure, um, portraits and pictures of Nelson, Nelson's life. Nelson's love life, um, you know, all of this kind of stuff. One one thing I remember about Nelson is that uh, he was incredibly short. Everybody in those days was incredibly short, um, and so all of the uh, all of the deck spaces on the Victory are all really kind of tiny, and you keep bumping your head because uh, the average height was quite a few inches less than it was today. So came with a with one of these lovely little brochures and then two of these coins each coin is 1.17 ounces of gold um these coins are doing incredibly well on the second hand market when they're graded if they get a 70 then uh, they're pretty much made at the moment you can see things like uh, auction prices for gold 5 pound pieces from uh, heritage and uh, coin cabinet are all um, pretty doing pretty well and have been stable and high for quite a few months now. So uh, two of those. One is Horatio Nelson with his, uh, with his fancy hat and the other one is the celebration of the Battle of Trafalgar, um, 1805 to 2005. And these themed coins are popular because they are to do with Nelson, to do with Trafalgar, they, they've got, um, it's like the Waterloo ones are really popular as well. Uh, and they're also gold and everybody seems to be a fan of large chunks of gold at the moment. I think there's more of an interest in large chunks of gold than there is in some of the smaller fractional gold pieces at the moment. Which is a little bit crazy because uh, these are expensive items. One of the things I particularly like about this is the writing on the, on the, uh, the rim. England expects that every man will do his duty, which was the uh, the most famous saying of Lord Nelson, apart from perhaps uh, Kiss Me Hardy, although uh, there's some doubt as to whether those were really his words. Big welcome to 2021 and very happy to announce we're continuing our discount promotion. 2% off everything at Coin Connection with code NEIL, N-E-I-L. So pay attention to all those discount codes because there's going to be lots of releases over the next couple of months and you will be able to save a little bit of money at Coin Connection by using one of those promo codes. I want to start to show you some of the coins that have come back. These were all sent to NGC back in October. So uh, we're now beginning of January, so you can see that's roughly how long the service time is. The coins go into NGC in the UK. They're sent over to the USA for grading. All the actual grading happens in the USA. And then they're sent back and, uh, and I pick them up and send them back to uh, whoever they belong to. So you can get a really good idea from some of these mega results unboxings exactly what uh, the average collector is buying and what they feel is important to grade. And uh, one of those is certainly the Una and the Lion. I've graded quite a few Unas recently. I think that um, a large number are still yet to be graded that are sitting in people's collections. They're just waiting. But probably the, the Silver Una 
for most people has been the the, the key coin of uh, of two thousand and twenty. It came out late two thousand and nineteen at uh, uh, one hundred and eighty pounds, including VAT, and uh, they're now selling for probably two thousand pounds or so uh, in a sixty nine two and a half thousand pounds and five or six thousand pounds even more in a seventy. Uh, of the 3,000 coins that were made, only a 100 and something have so far achieved a 70. And you need to understand, when you look at these Royal Mint coins, very few of these 2-ounce format coins will ever get a 70 at the moment. I don't know quite why, whether it's something to do with quality control at the Mint, but 69s are mostly what people will get. 10-15% will reach a 70. Got a few... Sovereigns that have come back. Um, these days, when coins are split up for uh, submission, they're split up label by label. So a lot of the ones that have the same label will all come back in the same tier. Um, doing it that way for NGC saves any issues with the wrong labels going on to the coins. So it's a good way of doing it, even if it uh, results in quite a bit more paperwork. But um, I really do think that the, the modern sovereign label looks great with, uh, with these coins. And it's quite interesting how people are choosing this label for even some of the very oldest sovereigns going back to 1817, uh, which are still considered modern sovereigns. I remember these coins. They came in, they were actually uh, sent by the Royal Mint Historical Coin Division to Mr. Regal. And there were three of them. And uh, they actually didn't do badly. I think they all got an AU58 and they were all advertised by the Royal Mint as AU coins. So I think the Mint did well and I think Regal also did well on those and had them graded. This one, um, great grade. Um, I think it does look as if it's kind of been cleaned during its life, doesn't it, really? But it's not harshly cleaned. So it's still got a great grade from NGC. Um, an MS64 on that coin is pretty outstanding. And they must have really, really liked this coin to give it uh, that high grade, probably one of the highest graded coins of its type. I get quite a few coins from collectors in Belgium, and they're all worried at the moment about how they can send coins to the UK for grading via NGC. And I'm trying to work out the best way of doing that. Now we're in Brexit. Occasionally, some of these coins bought at auctions come up partially cleaned and you can actually if you hold it up to the light see the uh the the, the top to bottom or bottom to top cleaning um lines on those coins as well here's another one from the same guy this one got an ms60 very rare grade it's the grade they reserve for coins they can't quite position they don't know whether they're uh, mint or whether they're circulated in fact the, um, the, the front looks a little bit kind of AU58, but the back looks very MS. This is one I particularly liked. Um, I, I knew this would probably be a problem because of all the creases in it. But uh, even with the creases, it's still a really interesting coin. Um, a very, very old penny. The back is actually better than the front. You can see, I think that's a little bit kind of uh, deeper in terms of strike. But really nice coin to have in anyone's collection. And I think quite a good one to grade because it looks uh, quite a lot more impressive, I think, in a slab. What else have we got here? Some of those. Yep, that's another one of those American coins, Colombian exposition coins. Now, this one's interesting. So this is an 1821 half crown and it's come up as tooled. And you can see just to the right of his ear is the, t the area that it was tooled. It looks maybe that it had a, a hole in it and the hole was filled in. Uh, somebody's been messing around with that. But you can definitely see that it's slightly different in the middle compared to the rest of the coin. And somebody's been playing with it. Uh, and that's why it came back obverse tooled. Had quite a few of these 1937 uh, and also 1953 proofs, but people are now picking out the 1937 silver proofs and sending them in for grading, all the different sizes. And so some of those are coming in. Some of them are doing really, really well, like the 66 crown did really well. The 66, 65 half crown uh, for the HRS collection. 
This one was interesting because this was sent to me as a proof, but it got picked up as an MS coin. And you can see that um, you know, this, this may have been in somebody's proof set. It may or may not be a proof. I, you know, if you look at the fields, you can see that it isn't really a polished blank in the same way as most of the proofs would be. Uh, it looks like a good quality MS coin, and that's how it was graded. Let's have a look at some of the others. Um, oh, this one is pretty cool. This is a quarter guinea. These coins were only produced for a very few years. There's quarter guineas and third of a guinea. Um, and there's quite a few people who collect these because they tend to be more cost effective to collect than some of the larger guinea, guinea gold coins. Uh, and some of them are really good and in good condition. Uh, and I've noticed quite an upswing in demand for these smaller, uh, older gold coins. And that one is a really good example. This one is a coin that went in for review for conservation and um, NGC decided they couldn't really improve that. This is a coin that went in for reconservation and appraisal as a 69, and uh, NGC uprated this coin after conservation to a 70. So it does happen. You know, I know a lot of you guys think, well, what do I do with my 69s? Do I send them back in, or do I keep them and put them into the market? You know, probably a few of those 69s will uprate. Most of them will stay, stay the same grade. Um, okay, so uh, what have we got here? This one is a, this was a PCGS um, 1937 that uh, the owner of this wanted this conserved. It was crossed at 66 into NGC. It was then conserved by NCS. Um, and you can see what an amazing job they did on the conservation. I think it's really, really nice. The only mistake they made is they were asked to put the king on the front, not the back. So this might have to go back and have the king uh, swap round because it's customary on the 1937s to have the king facing that way. This was another one that was part of ostensibly uh, a 1937 proof set. This was graded as an MS coin. And you can see here, there is no real um, polishing to the planchet uh, on the fields. It looks much more like an MS coin than it does a proof coin. So you can understand that a little bit as well. Next, we have um, an 1825 uh, Sovereign. Modern Sovereign label. So it's nice to see older coins being uh, being graded with the Modern Sovereign label. I think it, the golden tones of the label make it look pretty cool. And I wanted to show you this because um, some of the patterns on this coin have only seven hearts in the semi. The semi is the bit kind of right, the shield right in the middle. And you can see... Hopefully you can see just um, above the right, that's the absolute central shield, there's a tiny little bit of a heart poking out. And you always get the tiny bit of heart poking out on a circulation coin for 1825. The pattern proofs, uh, some of the very rare ones, have only seven hearts in that semi. These coins, uh, this one is really, really good. A 70 is very, very uh, demanded at the moment for this two ounce bond proof. This one is bond number two uh, and this coin is actually available for sale if anybody wants to uh, talk to me, uh, send me a PM and we can arrange a deal for this coin. Uh, I know that this one is available for sale. That one on the left, uh, in fact, in between it arriving and making this video, uh, has already uh, sold uh, for uh, a pretty high price actually I think. They, they look pretty cool here when you can see two of the three coins in the design. It's a shame I haven't got a two ounce of the third one at the same time to show you guys the complete picture in the enhanced proofs. Got some coins back for the Wong collection and uh, they all did very well. Uh, you can see these two coins in the, uh, these are the number three design for the Bond, shaken not stirred. They both did 70, which is great. The silver coins, very unusual to get 70. Uh, this was another coin that came in. The larger ones tend to get 69s. I don't know why. There seems to be quite a lot of dust and scum over the surface of a lot of the two-ounce uh, silver coins from the Mint at the moment. This is a nice coin that came in. That was the Independence of Ghana. 
And this one uh, was a coin that came, I think, from milled and hammered coins originally. Um, they specialise in, in these Charles I coins. And this is a, a half crown minted at the Bristol Mint. Uh, I think it's a ridiculously lovely coin. Um, very, very, uh, very nice. Totally gradable. It's got that lovely banner on the reverse. Um, very, very nice. This one came in. Uh, the owner of this coin wasn't 100% sure whether it was real or whether it wasn't real. Um, it was actually a coin that originally, I think, came from a Baldwin sale. So there was every chance of it being real, to be honest. Um, but it did very, very well. And it's a tetra drachm. So tetra meaning four. It's four drachms in one big silver coin from ancient uh, Greece. And I think it is absolutely fabulous. This is um, the, the latest Queen's Beast, got a 69, and then there's a Britannia that, uh, that got a 70. Um, all of these coins are good examples of things that uh, people are choosing to grade at the moment. So that's the first of what will probably be a fair few, um, a fair few videos on mega results. So hang around over the next few days, keep watching the channel, keep liking, subscribing, and there'll be more mega results along very soon.